So ARM has announced some new CPU and GPU cores. I've got videos covering all the different aspects of the launch. In this video, I want to do a deep dive into the G1 Ultra. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. So the G1 Ultra features a new ray tracing unit bringing next generation ray tracing to mobile. So of course, ARM has a long, long history in producing mobile GPUs. Even if we just zip back a few years, we can see the Mali G710. We had the first ray tracing in the Immortality G715. And then various improvements as we go along. And now here we are with the Mali G1 Ultra in 2025. Always along the way, we're seeing improvements in performance, improvements in efficiency, and improvements in AI features. Now, what's driving the changes in the GPU? Well, this is a really interesting number. I found this quite fascinating. So different versions of Genshin Impact from 2021 to 2023, so over a two-year period, there was a 28% increase in GPU complexity. So even the same game as they bring out new versions of it, new iterations of it, it's just using more and more GPU power. And even games like ZZZ, ZZZ, depending on what part of the world you're from, uh, has a 10% actually gr more complex GPU requirements than Genshin Impact. So all of these games are coming out. They're games you can play today. It's not like in the future there might be. And this is really an important thing to note. When... Uh, G game makers and in fact any app maker is given the power into their hands they will use it so the complexity of mobile games and other applications increase as more and more is available to the app developer so never never write in the comments and so many people write this and it's very frustrating oh it's fast enough already it's not because when you give the application developer more uh, capabilities and more performance they'll use it it's also noticed interesting that uh, new versions of benchmarks, including 3D Mark here, actually have more ray tracing ability. So the original version of Solar Bay, which was a ray tracing benchmark, actually only 15% of it was ray tracing. The rest was uh, normal GPU workload. But now the new one, Solar Bay Extreme, actually has bumped up that ray tracing component to over. 50%. So that's really interesting. So although that's not a game, of course, I understand that. The point is, is that the technology is generally being used more and more. Starting with Benchmark, it will be also in games, but the demands are increasing on the GPU. So what is the Mali G1 Ultra? It's the highest performance and most efficient GPU from ARM, next generation ray tracing, and they've done a lot to work with developers to make sure all of these features uh, are available and actually some extra features for developers to get the maximum optimization from their GPUs. So what are the numbers? 20% better performance, 20% better uh, inference, faster inference for uh, AI workloads, 9% less energy per frame, and that's not including any technologies for upscaling. So this is just 9% less energy per frame using the same workload and the same technology uh, as last time. So it's just the hardware there. And now because of the new ray tracing unit, two times a higher performance. We'll jump into that more in a moment. Now, one of the things ARM has done to improve the performance is this new, new technology called image region dependencies. Now, multiple render passes are common for post-processing effects, blur being the common one, and you have to go through three times maybe over the same thing again uh, and again. Now, how that would work traditionally is you would do the first one, you would do the second one, you'd do the third one. That's fine. But actually, the reality is there is a ramp up time and a ramp down time to do with spinning up the fragment thread. That, in other words, the bit that's doing the thing in the hardware needs to be spun up, it needs to do its work and it needs to spin down again, it will then be spun up again for, for something else. Now that's a gap. Clearly there's a gap there and if you can improve that gap, that would improve performance. And that's exactly what they've done. Using some very clever uh, intelligent scheduling, they're able to say, well, while that one's ramping down, this one can ramp up. Uh, and the data is actually going to be available so they know when it's going to be available and so it's not waiting now for this they're actually just really starting up one job before the other one's finished but knowing that the data so not the control part of it the data will be ready when it needs to be and reduce that gap and of course you've reduced that gap you've now improved uh, performance 
Now talking about the new ray tracing unit, uh, they've done some things to improve it. The most important thing I'll talk about now is that how you do ray tracing is really, really uh, interesting. I won't go too much. I have got videos on this. I won't go too much now, but basically you could just run all of the ray tracing in a shader core. And there have been uh, different uh, SOC makers that say, and with ray tracing, but actually they're just you doing the ray tracing all in the shader core. There's no special hardware. Now, where ARM were up until now was the ray tracing uh, intersections were done in special hardware. And of course, you're following these rays and, you, and you've got all this geometry, as they call it, all these triangles. And you want to know when you hit something, when you bounce off something and all that kind of stuff. And you do that in hardware. And that's what gives you the speed. Some of it's still running in the shader core because you've got bits that are happening in there. But if you can do this bit, think about it, all those thousands and thousands of rays. If you can do this bit in the hardware, then you're going to give you hardware ray tracing. And that's where they were to now. Now ARM are doing this third step, which which is bounding volume hierarchy, the BVH, is a structure that holds all this geometry and you have to go through it to work out what you're doing, what each ray is doing with each thing. Now, again, up until now, that was done in the shader core. Absolutely fine. It's a GPU compute done in the GPU compute, but it's not done in special hardware. Now it is. Now ARM are doing that also in the hardware. So here's the RTU V1. As you can see, it had the intersection testing there in a special bit of hardware but some of the stuff was going on here in the compute shaders so it was basically a code that was running inside of the shader but now they've put all of this stuff inside of the hardware so all of the testing and the traversal of the structures is all done in hardware and of course if it's done in hardware it's faster and it's more power efficient also worth noting, there are improvements in AI acceleration, particularly here with the matrix multiply with FP16 precision that's been added to this generation of GPU. Overall, what have we got? We've got two times performance increase for ray tracing, 20% improvements in various gaming because of the IRD technology I just talked about, and an increase in the AI performance if it's using this uh, matrix multiply with FP16. As with previous years, the G1 Ultra is there. That means you're going to have at least 10 cores and the dedicated hardware ray tracing. There is going to be a G1 Premium and a G1 Pro. They're basically exactly the same GPUs, but you reduce the number of cores to six to nine or from one to five. And in these cases, they probably wouldn't include the ray tracing because why would you cripple the cores and then say, but we want to do ray tracing. So although they're architecturally exactly the same, you basically, if you have less than 10 cores, it becomes a G1 Premium. Less than six cores, it becomes a G1 Pro. Okay, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.